Let's work on some examples of using static member variables and methods in classes. So first off, just to review some information, some terminology, when we declare a class, we have some sort of class declaration. So for instance, let's say we have enemy, and then when we create a new variable using that enemy as a data type, such as We'll have an enemy Goomba or enemy Bullet Bill or anything else. These are called instantiations. Or instances of enemy. And these are objects. So the class itself is called enemy, but then when you declare a new enemy here and a new enemy there, those are instances of enemy and they'll have their own unique versions of the variables. So over here I have a kitten class declared and each kitten has a age and a name. And then as I declare a kitten here and a kitten here and a kitten here, they'll each have their own separate names and ages. They don't share that information. That's not a variable that belongs to the class, it more belongs to the instance of the class. So at the moment this isn't using any static members. I've just written a program that creates a pile of kittens, asks us how many kittens to make, initializes that memory through the pointer that I declared, sets up a bunch of kittens, it displays total kittens but we don't have anything to do that at the moment, and it'll display the list of all of the kittens before freeing memory and leaving the program. So one of the most common kind of examples that I see of using static members in just as a programming example is to count how many instances of the class there are. So we're going to do that and later on I'll show where I tend to use static members in actual usage. <laughs> so just to make a counter, something that counts how many cats have we made, that can be also managed by the kitten class, we can create a static int counter. Actually I'm not going to even name that underscore. I'm not sure what the um, naming conventions for a static member is. I should, probably should have looked that up. Maybe I'll look that up now. Well, some people use a s underscore, so I guess we can do that as well. Uh, so these are member variables. They belong to the instance of kitten, like a kitten instance, but the static one is not a member of a specific kitten. It is part of the entire class. It's a class variable. So we'll create a static integer counter and during our kitten constructor we're going to increment this. Now at the moment I don't think this is going to compile. It'll give us an error because it's saying undefined reference to kitten s underscore counter. So something we have to do with our member variables if we're doing it inside of the .hpp file, then at the top of the cpp file we need to take, uh, basically kind of like redeclare it and say int kitten s underscore counter, and I'm just going to set it to zero. It needs to be initialized to something, and we need to say this is part of kitten. So now I can build, and that will be able to go up each time. I could do a cout, so um, s counter is now, and when I run this I can say 10 kittens and we can see as each constructor runs it'll increment that s counter. So I'm also going to create a variable to um, return the amount of kittens there are. So over here I'm going to create a static int get count and over here we can define the int kitten get count and return the s counter. 
So then back in main, let's move this build real quick. So now we'll display the count of kittens. So we're going to call the get count method, but we can count, call it directly through the kitten class. So instead of using a specific instance of the kitten class, we invoke the kitten class itself and call that function. And then we can build and run. And down here, this will give us that. And as I create more kittens or less kittens, it would be able to increment each time. Likewise, if for some reason we had a destructor and we can decrement the amount of kittens once a kitten is destroyed. So for instance, let's create a little function real quick. And we'll create a single kitten in here. It will be created and then it will be destroyed. But we can also output kitten count. So we'll have that set of kittens. We will also call example. Build that, run. So we're going to create 10 in the array, but then another one is created during that example function over here. And then that function ends, so that kitten goes out of scope and it's automatically destroyed. <laughs> it's kind of a weird way to say things. And then the counter gets decremented, and now there are again just 10. So you could use this to keep track of something in your program, like Maybe if you were wrapping pointers inside of a class, you'd say, how many times is this pointer being used? Or just different things like that. Though I tend to not use static members to count things, so I will show you how I end up using static members, uh, static methods and variables here in a moment. Okay, I'm just going to show some code that I've already written, and then we'll write our own kind of class that will use static members. So you might have seen me use the menu class that I wrote in some of my programs where I am able to just write something like menu header and pass in some text and then it just handles displaying a nice menu for me on the screen so I don't have to re see out everything in the format that I want every time. I can just kind of have a class to handle that for me. So that class is here. This is where I'm using some static members. And I'm using static members for my menu class because I don't need to make multiple versions of the menu class. Nothing really changes or would change if I had different instances. Or at least the way it's written, like if I had a menu class for this screen and a menu class for that screen, what would change? The symbols that get drawn when it displays a little horizontal bar Nothing changes, it's the same no matter where I'm using it. So I don't need to make an instance of the menu class. I am happy just having a function that takes some text and then draws out a line and draws out the header and draws out another line and it works the same every time. So header, I have some other static ones like draw a horizontal bar, show a menu. Uh, it's not so much really storing any data, but you could store data. You could have a static variable in here. But since this is very much just a, this class does functions for me, and I want to keep it all in like a nice little package, instead of just having random functions floating around, it's nice to have these all be static uh, variables. Similarly, I believe, no, that one, well, this one does have some static members, but a better one might be the string utility that I wrote. So sometimes I want to convert a string to an integer or an integer to a string and different things like that. I don't need different instances of a class to convert that for me. I could, I just need a function. So I created a static, this is just a templated function here. Um, we have a static to string function and it just turns whatever gets passed in into a string. Um, so that's static, and again, when I'm in main or whatever, I could call it like, here's an integer, and I could see cout, or let's say, I don't know, string text. 
equals blah and then string util to string the ASDF string or integer. So then I can use this anywhere in a program. Another example here, these are all just my C++ utilities. I have a logger class that I like to use for larger projects. And what that ends up doing is it outputs my program log as it's running through everything to an HTML file. Now this one does have static variables. It has an output file that it's going to use. It's going to have some timestamps. And the reason why this is all static is because I don't want to have different versions of the logger. I want one logger throughout my entire program and I want to be able to access all of that data without having to instantiate it and set it up again. So it's all static. I set it up one time. I manually called the setup function at the beginning of main and I called the cleanup function at the end of main because you can't have a static constructor or destructor. And then throughout the program, I can just use the logger colon colon out to display an error message or a like starting the init function or something like that. So if we go down here, these are the variables up here. We have to re-declare them before everything else is defined. All of the functions are defined down here and I can show you what that looks like when it actually runs. So here's an example log where it handles creating this little web page and then writing everything out to this text file. It's not really very pretty HTML, but it's just being generated by this class and I use it for a game or for debugging stuff. Um, so you can just see this is building a menu and it's setting up a lot of rectangles. So, okay, so those are some of my C++ utilities. And then when I tend to use static members the most, again, it's anytime I don't need multiple instances of the thing, multiple versions of this thing. And that comes into play usually when I want to write a manager to manage all of the assets of a game or all of the enemies or all of the menus. So I'll end up having a game. And of course a game is going to need art. So there's going to be some sort of art class that loads in. Here's all the textures from here. And I need a place to put the art in the game so that I can access that art from anywhere else. So then I have an art manager, usually just called an asset manager. Or for menus, I have to load in menus that here's how it's set up. Then you have a menu manager and say, okay, menu manager, please load the main menu. Please change to the title menu and so on. So let's look at the font manager. That should be pretty small. So this one is responsible for storing a set of fonts and I'm using a different library here, the SFML library to which has a font object, but my font manager stores a static map of all of the fonts that would be used in the game, or I could clear it out and just load in certain things at a time. And then it has its static methods for add something, clear something, or get a specific font. So down here is just where it has that variable, the add function, the clear function, and the get function. So then where that's being used would be somewhere in main. I have a bunch of stuff being initialized before the actual program starts. So I'm calling the font manager, add, this font name is main, it's going to be the main font that's used, and then it loads it from this location. And if I needed to load a font at any time in the program, I could do that. Likewise, I have a texture manager. So if I needed a new texture while the game was running, I could just tell it to load it immediately and then access that. And here's a menu manager. It's just responsible for storing all of the shapes, labels, images, buttons, and text boxes, which are just classes that I've declared. So I've created a little UI library, I suppose. 
and then it has all of its static methods for getting those items, adding them from reading the text file that has all of the stuff to find, and it's just this one stop. You need something with the menu, you go to the menu manager. You don't access the buttons directly. You ask the menu manager, is anything being clicked? And it will give you the data. And because of that, I only need one menu manager. Different screens might have menus, but what I would do would say, menu manager, clean up the current menu, load in the next menu. So we don't need to have everything re-declared, re-instantiated every time. So to kind of illustrate the usage of a, a manager class that uses static functions and variables, I'm going to refactor this text adventure game. So the way this is structured are, is that there are rooms, and each room has a neighbor, a name, and a description. And then I haven't filled in any room manager stuff, but the text adventure currently is managing the rooms. So it has a dynamic array of rooms and a pointer to the current room and the total rooms. But this could be extracted out. The text adventure doesn't necessarily need to manage the rooms. That's kind of beyond its scope. The text adventure should be, how does the game operate? Not so much, how do I load a map sort of thing. So if I run this right now, I get a seg fault. <laughs> so let's open up the file. I am probably I am missing the data folder, which had all of the room data in it. And so it crashed. <laughs> so we'll try that again. So it loads all the things. I can say let's go south, and then it has some more information. Um I can go north, south, south, east, different places, and then I can type quit. So it's just a very simple, here's a set of rooms. Each room has a neighbor, it has a pointer to its neighbor, either north, south, east, or west, and you can move between them. So what we're going to do is we're going to start extracting information from the text adventure itself. So. Um, let's name this room manager HPP. And we'll include the room class. So anything that the text adventure was dealing with with these rooms can be moved over. And these can be private because only the room manager needs to know this information. It can give you the room name if you need it, or the room location. Um, and then we'll also probably move this here. I don't know if we need that in public or private. We'll look in a little bit. And I will, I think load game data also just deals with the map files. So let's. Let's move load game data over here. We'll just say load map data. And I might have to go back and forth a little bit as we go because I it's been a few months since I wrote this or maybe one month since I wrote this, but we'll check this out. So in room manager, we'll include room manager and move some of these functions over. And I haven't made anything static yet, but I'm going to just make those variables static. Allocating space, those are also for the rooms. So we'll grab those and put move them over here. I'm just moving everything first that I want to have in the other area. Anything dealing with rooms goes in here. So 
Because we're going to be using static members, we'll need a manual setup and cleanup function. So we're making all of these static. We're going to make these static as well because we only need one room manager. We don't need a room manager over here with a set of rooms and a room manager over here with a different set of rooms. So these are now static variables and they need to be redefined up here as part of room manager, not text adventure. I'm going to update all of these to have room manager as the prefix. And we'll need a setup and a cleanup function. So because we can't have a constructor that is static, we will have to manually call the cleanup and setup functions. So over in text adventure, it will deallocate space once, once it's done. Well, that is not responsible for deallocating map space anymore. So instead, we'll make sure to say room manager clean up before the program is done. And I need to include the room manager HPP file. Down here, these are room based things. So we'll put those over here. And when the text adventure starts, we'll say room manager setup. So then that will come over here and take care of setting that up. So now these have changed names. We have S underscore rooms. Maybe I can just hope that a replace all works as intended. Uh, not always does. Uh, sometimes gives you the wrong stuff. So be, be cautious, but we'll try. And what's the last one? Total rooms. Okay, so now this is going to be updated to use the room manager. Um, we don't have direct access to the current room anymore, but we could create a function to say um, static void display current room info or whatever sounds like a good descriptive name. I'm going to come down here. Oops. And then from here we can say the pointer to the current room display what it has. So then over here at this point we get rid of that and say room manager display current room. Again the text adventure doesn't need to know the inner workings of how the rooms work. It just needs to know that it has a current room and then oh we're trying to move? Go send that command to the room manager. So we will also prefix that there. What else do we have? That's just getting the command. That might be good enough for the text adventure class. Again, we're refactoring and I still haven't tried to build the code yet, so there's probably some things I'm going to be missing until we get a little deeper in here. So we have deleting the rooms on deallocating space. We are getting the index of the room with name, load game data, allocate space. Let's go ahead and build and see what we got. Okay, uh, room manager load game data, because I renamed that. I renamed it to load map data, because that's more descriptive. If it says load game data, you'd think it was doing everything. I need to include fstream and iostream. Okay, and then it works. Or at least it builds. We don't know if it works yet. <laughs> it looks like it works. It looks like it was perhaps a successful refactor. Um, as you get more experience in programming, you become less surprised when you do a bunch of code changes and build it and it works. <laughs>
it's I'm always expecting there to be errors, but not a hundred percent of the time when I make a lot of code changes. But when you're starting out, it might feel like anytime you make a lot of code changes, it messes up a ton of things. Just do a few things at a time. Um, just do like a feature at a time or a few lines of code at a time even. Um, sometimes if it's really giving you trouble, just do like one line of code and build and run and then, you know, do the next line of code. That's just my tip for not having to deal with build errors. Okay, so that was really all we needed to do. Now we have a room manager. It's responsible for allocating that space, loading in the, the game data files, updating the current room that we're in, and all of that. Um, the text adventure itself, all it needs now, if we had an inventory, we could add an inventory manager or something like that, but right now it just needs to be able to access the room manager and it needs to be able to parse the commands that the user enters. And it runs the, the game loop over and over. So that's really all there is to that. I tend to use static member methods and variables in this exact way. Um, and you might see this, there's also design patterns, which are types of ways to design a set of classes to perform a certain task. That is something that's been discovered over time. There's a design pattern called a singleton pattern, which basically gives us the same outcome, but it's a little bit more formalized. I am lazy and I just write my managers in this way. If you want to look up more, um, looking up design patterns is a good thing to know about so you can research them later. Um, you could learn about the singleton design pattern. There's also other types of design patterns, but I just don't want to go off on a tangent. I'm just, it's a word that you will hear in the workplace. Um, so you should be somewhat familiar with what is a design pattern. But this is just an example of using static members. So hopefully that was kind of helpful in a few ways you can do that and how the syntax at all works.